Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We're going to do an ambiguous case problem. We're going to go through our decision tree. Now, I've made you a, a different decision tree, and so let's go through it. The first thing you're going to have to ask yourself is, anytime I'm solving a triangle, and for solving a triangle, that means find every angle, find every side, and you're going to have to find the area. So we're going to get into that as well. But for finding sides, finding angles and finding areas, you're going to have to make some decisions. First of all, is it a right triangle? If it is a right triangle, duh, okay? Because then you're going to use sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, cotangent, yada, yada, yada. You use Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. You can also use area equals one half bh. Now, so if that's the case, if it's a right triangle, no worries. This is old school junior high stuff. If not, let's assume it's not a right triangle. Then we have a number of options. Now, in any given triangle, we have a number of ways that we could be given information. I could be given this side here, this side here, and this side here. If that is the case, that means I have a side, side, side situation, and I have no trouble with that. I would use law of cosines. The reason I would use law of cosines is because I don't have that angle, so I don't have a pair. I'm also going to use Heron's formula, and we'll get to Heron's formula in just a little bit. But um, the idea there is that's easy. Next, what if instead of having that side over here, you had this angle here. You have a side, an angle, and a side. Well, a side, an angle, and a side means you're still going to use law of cosines because I don't have any combos that I can make. I have a side but no angle. I have an angle but no side. I have a side but no angle. So I'm still going to have to use a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c equals c squared. Law of cosines to find that. Once I've done that, I can use an area formula. And the area formula is going to be 1 half ab sine c. All right, and it's going to be two sides with the included angle. So that's going to be what we're going to be able to use. Now, that is if you have, so we have side, 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 check. We have side, angle, side, check. Next, we want to be able to move on. And if I have an angle, side, angle. So in this case, I have a triangle that is... Angle over here, side here, angle over here. That's no big deal because I can find this missing angle over here, and now I can do law of sines and do a combo. Once I have that, I can either use, again, 1 half AB sine C, or I can use Heron's formula. Additionally, what if I have an angle, angle, side situation? So in the case of an angle, angle, side situation, I know this angle, I know this angle, and I know this side over here. Well, that's really, frankly, ideal because that means I'm already set up to do a law of sines to find that guy right over there. Sine A over A equals sine B over B. Okay, so that's no big deal. Here's where we run into trouble is where we have a side-side angle situation. Now, a side-side angle situation happens where I have a side here, I have a side here, and I have an angle here. In this case, that doesn't necessarily mean I have a problem, but it might. So let's go to the chart. Do I have a side-side angle situation? If possible, if I do, I have potentially an ambiguous case. First question, is the angle I'm given obtuse? If the angle I'm given is obtuse, guaranteed it's not ambiguous because I can guarantee I know what angle that is and everything else in the triangle must be acute because the sum of all angles has to be 180. So if it is obtuse, not a big deal because automatically every one of these other angles has to be acute. No big deal. Law of signs. Have a nice day. Once you have law of signs, one half AB sine C. So that's no big deal. Next, let's assume that that angle, instead of being obtuse, is acute. Now, there are two different ways we could go if this angle is acute. So in this case, clearly the angle I'm given is acute. Now, I've drawn this angle obtuse, but if I don't know that angle, I have no idea whether that is obtuse, whether it's acute, whether it's right. I have no idea what it is. So in this case, I have to ask myself, Side one compared to side two, okay? Now, if side two is 
bigger than side one. If side two is bigger than side one, I'm cool. It's no big deal because there's only one way for this to go. If it's if I have something this long and I try to swing it here, it's going to overshoot. If I try to swing it over here, it's going to overshoot. If I swing it all the way around, I just make the same triangle going in a different direction. So side two bigger than side one is okay, dokay. Okay, it is okay, dokay. No worries. I have one solution. Just use the law of signs and have a nice day. One solution. Here's where the problem comes in. If I have an acute angle, but instead of side two being bigger than side one, side one is bigger than side two. Now I have a potential for a number of things. There's my acute angle. And here is my side one. I could have either something that is too short to reach, something that is just long enough to reach for a right angle, or something that actually is too long for a right angle, but is short enough that if I swing it in this other way, kicks over here, so I end up having to break this triangle into two, meaning I have one that looks like this and one that looks like that. That's what we have going on here. The only way you'll know what you have is to go ahead and say, yes, side one is bigger than side two. I still do the law of signs. If I still do the law of signs and I get nothing, then I have my answer, no solution. If I do the law of signs and I say, and I get that the other angle is 90 degrees, then that's a solution. I say, well, why wasn't it a 90 degree angle up here? Well, because we may not have been given the 90, we may have been given the small angle out of some right triangle and only now found that it's correct and right. So I have no solution, one solution, or in this case, I have two solutions. This is where it could have been kicked out this way, or it could have been kicked in this way, but in either case, I need to break it up into two different triangles and solve both completely. All right, so hopefully that makes a little more sense for you. The homework is the ambiguous case delta math that goes along with this.